This is uh, Koiru. I was inspired um, by a video I saw uh, on the internet uh, in the start of, of December. It was posted on Adrian Black's channel and featured uh, a bunch of YouTubers that was celebrating something they called December, where they had the theme Dus, uh, that should be a team that they was going to visit uh, during December. And as I myself um, had my computer history from uh, the early 80s and uh, till this day, I've actually been working with computers through most of the DOS area. All by the, the first couple of years, it was only as a bystander. My first actual experience with, with MS DOS was in, in 1985. But since then, I've been working with what used to be called MS-DOS or IBM compatible computers my whole career. And uh, as I was running my own uh, company during uh, the 90s and uh, 2000s, uh, I also got my hands on a lot of old DOS type computers. I've been uh, collecting computers that I got uh, from customers that they were going to throw away, some customers wanted me to copy data from the old machines and just asked me to discard of the machine and I I told them I, I want to keep it and they say okay just wipe uh, the data and a lot of these machines is also computers that come into my shop uh, with people asking me to upgrade them or to repair them or something and I say no this is this is not uh, repairable you, you really ought to buy something new so a lot of this stuff has accumulated over the years and this video is about me uh, showing you uh, a short brief uh, of a lot of my more exotic computers. Uh, I'm not taking uh, any mainstream uh, computers that shown on a lot of YouTube channels. This is the more exotic one that's not featured so much elsewhere and I'm going to focus on portable computers and I also have some larger portables like the compact portables, the IBM uh, PS2 range of portables uh, and stuff but this is not going to be featured uh, in this video. This is the more obscure systems that's not presented much everywhere. I'm sorry for uh, the poor picture quality on some of these uh, videos. Uh, some of them is filmed uh, in my downtown storage room that's below ground and there is no uh, lighting and the room is itself uh, stuffed so it's not a huge space to, to do anything. And some of this is uh, filmed uh, on my office where I have some of the computers uh, on display and some of this is, is filmed here and I'm by no means a professional uh, when it comes to video. I'm uh, a novice and a not very good one when it comes to editing or anything else that's video related. So really uh, excuse <laughs> beforehand for the poor uh, quality. Uh, but now uh, let's get on to uh, the first uh, computer. 20 uh, it's a 386 20 megahertz computer is from uh, Toshiba it's um, been in storage now for about yeah I think about 20 years since I I last had this in in use it has a three and a half inch uh, floppy drive it has uh, a built-in power supply and it has uh, the ports for expansion uh, back here uh, as you can see this is RGB uh, output uh, that means that this is not a VGA computer at least it doesn't have VGA out Probably it's a CGA or uh, maybe an early form of EGA. Yes, and there is also this expansion port here. Nice carrying handle. Um, 
and uh, this is probably an LCD display or maybe it's plasma it's quite thick um, the keyboard is nice for the area it's a Norwegian keyboard um, I think this computer probably will work but probably a lot of the capacitors for the power and maybe if this is uh, a plasma display they they have to be be changed for get this started and this is the big brother uh, the Toshiba 3200 uh, it's quite similar to the 3100 in in some of the area but this is a, a, a bigger machine and it says probably newer vintage is 1.44 megabyte drive. It has the same built-in power supply as the 3100. And it also has similar ports on the back. Also this computer has a 9-pin uh, output for external screen. It's worth to notice that this is marked with CRT and not RGB as uh, the 3100. Yes. Um, this machine uh, also is quite similar in, in design to the 3100. This has a built-in numerical uh, keyboard but otherwise there is not uh, much uh, difference um, this machine has probably I have probably never uh, powered this machine on I think I got it in a, a swap maybe I had power on it and, and copied out data for the previous user and uh, that's it uh, but that at least 20 years ago. Yes, this machine is an Acer and it's the 1100LX. I think this is, um, I think this might be a 386 area computer, uh, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, this computer has some rather strange features. Um, I don't have... Um, yes, as you can see when this is opened it looks like a quite ordinary laptop. But this actually has a, a keyboard that comes loose like this. Uh, so it's probably... <laughs> For the ergonomics, because this base is quite thick, it's uh, not very good ergonomic to to have this without no support for your palms or or stuff. So this keyboard is is actually quite compact, and it has uh, keys. It's a membrane keyboard of some sort. Uh, that seems uh, okay, and it's also possible to to take out the cable and, and close the lid. So there are probably some functions to have uh, this machine uh, working uh, with an external display and as a, a stationary computer. <coughs> yeah, when it comes to expansion, this actually has a VGA port, uh, external floppy connector, serial and parallel port. And it also has an external uh, mouse or keyboard connector uh, I'm not sure uh, and this is uh, a port for uh, a docking station or expansion and this machine has built-in battery and uh, also um, has um, external uh, power supply um, so this machine is um, yeah, it also has this nice carrying handle so you can actually bring it with you. Yeah, and it also has a built-in 
uh, floppy drive. Something that many of you don't know that uh, the Philips, the Dutch manufacturer of all kinds of electronics, they also had video games uh, and other home type uh, of computers. They also launched an MSX uh, computer, but that's a, a story for a different time. So this is a typical example of an early MS-DOS uh, portable computer. As you can see, this machine is it's rather bulky. It has built-in floppy drive. It has an internal hard drive. It has uh, expansion uh, ports. This has a VGA out. It has uh, serial and, and parallel out on this. It has this expansion slot. Inside here you will find uh, an ESA port that you can put internal cards on. And this computer also um, features what you can see here is it's actually the battery pack uh, of the machine. And this is a nickel cadmium battery pack pack. The, the Nikad cells themselves, they have died. The machine in itself is in really nice uh, condition and when it's not been used it has been um, it has been stored in this really nice uh, original Philips uh, PC uh, uh, bag. This is uh, the front uh, of my Philips LTP 3230. As you have seen before, the machine is in really good condition uh, on the outside, and this machine is actually fully uh, working. So, I will be showing you more of this uh, in a later uh, video. Um, this is my brick. This is a 286 uh, computer. This is a rebadged uh, OEM computer and it's sold as uh, a brick. Brick was the um, brand name of the Norwegian company Datavarehuse uh, when they was uh, in business and they stopped selling uh, the previous main brand that was uh, Copa. As you can see this is a fairly standard computer uh, of the time and, and the area and it's uh, really nothing special. It has a track ball as the pointing device and this computer was running uh, Windows uh, 3.1. It has a, a, a black and white LCD and uh, this LCD is of the passive uh, variant that doesn't have much contract and it has a very slow update. As you can see this, this particular uh, computer has the lock for the lid broken. Um, this computer I think actually works. Um, it's uh, The battery was removed uh, quite some years ago and uh, and I think I actually have the power brick for this machine too. It's been in, in storage uh, since 1996, I think. Uh, this is a special beast. Uh, this computer was launched by the uh, Italian company Olivetti and it actually was their first attempt for a, a multimedia computer. So you can see on the top of the lid here, you actually have some uh, buttons that mimic uh, a tape recorder uh, of the area. And that was also uh, a part of the gimmick with this computer. This computer has a really small form factor, uh, as you can see. Uh, this is a 386SX uh, SLC uh, kind of computer and it really means that this is really 
uh, a 286 uh, 386 that you want. Um, this act computer has actually been owned of me since it was uh, brand new. It has had a kind of a rough life uh, for the last years. Uh, but it's in pretty good shape. Um, the hinge uh, is a bit weak, so the display is is sagging uh, if it stands up like this. Um, this computer has never been very reliable. I remember I had to do hard reset um, of this from time to time, uh, also when it was quite new. This um, also has some built-in applications that you can see here, but this is actually installed uh, software. So with this computer you had part of the system in, in BIOS and the system that was in the BIOS was this uh, tape recorder a dictaphone uh, kind uh, of application and also this uh, address and notepad and works is uh, some built-in application. Uh, the more fancy thing with this computer is it actually has its own numpad but Overall, it's it's really kind of, of small. When I place it on, on top um, of an A4 sheet of, of paper, you can really see how, how small it really is. And that was the main selling point of uh, this uh, computer back in the day. But it also was kind of working. And I actually had all the extension cord also for this. The, you had an... Um, external uh, floppy, uh, you have external parallel serial ports and also a VGA output and everything is, is special uh, connectors but I had all the, the leads uh, to transfer this uh, uh, into normal uh, sockets, V-sub sockets and also you have some, some dictaphone uh, outputs here. You have the volume, the headphone and the microphone outputs and also the main power switch on this side. There is also a built-in loudspeaker and you also have the mouse button is here on, 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 on the end of this computer. So when you, you, you was using this computer in Windows you can actually use it like this um, and also these buttons was active but this was a much more easy way to control the computer when it was in use. As I said, this has never been a very reliable computer and it's, it's not often you see that on uh, normal computers, but this actually has this hard reset button implemented in the back. So I think the Italians, instead of fixing the bugs, they just made this hard reset button available so that you can actually reset the computer and get it up and running. This is also a computer that was sold under many different names. Uh, this is actually sold under the brand name Chicconi and I think that was a brand that the uh, uh, producer itself used on these uh, computers. This is a 286 uh, class of, of computer, I think. Maybe this is a 386SX, but I'm not quite sure. I seem to remember that uh, it was used with Windows uh, 3.1, but I, I, I'm not really sure. Maybe it was a 3.11. This computer was also quite typical for the area. It has uh, built-in uh, floppy drives. It has an internal hard drive. It has uh, this special DC power supply. I think this is uh, requiring 12 volts, uh, 12 and uh, 5 volts. And it has the full set of sockets in the back for for two COM ports, printer port. This special external. Uh, floppy disk drive and they've actually painted over this to make sure that you don't connect the printer cable into the floppy disk drive. Main on off switch and here is a plug for an external keyboard, a PS2 style. This computer was sold by uh, a local company up here. Yeah, it seems I was actually wrong uh, when I uh, labeled this computer as a 286 
computer. This is actually a 386SX. Uh, so it was capable of running uh, Windows 3.11. Another one of my old uh, computers, um, like this uh, brick I presented earlier. This is a Remedy Note. That's also a OEM brand that was manufactured or uh, distributed by the Norwegian company Datovarhusa. This is a slightly more advanced computer than the um, the brick. Uh, that I showed you earlier. Uh, this is slightly newer and it um, also has a 120 uh, megabyte hard drive and this machine is I think a 386 uh, machine that is equipped with DLC type uh, processor. As you can see this machine has normal ports. You have PGA, you have serial and you have parallel and one keyboard connector. The machine itself has a nickel cadmium uh, battery pack that is of course long gone and, and dead by now. The machine is in really good condition. This machine was probably manufactured uh, in around 1993, 94, 95, that area. This is also a machine that was specially manufactured for the Norwegian market. You can see it has the special Norwegian letters on, on the keyboard. This machine is, is really sturdy. The only thing that's that's damaged on this machine is this thin flap that was here and covering these ports. And this is something that normally quite easily gives away on these computers. It also has a built-in uh, three and a half inch floppy drive. Yes, here we have another Goody from the early days. Toshiba manufactured the original T1000 uh, computer uh, as was one of the earliest portable computer in this form factor. Uh, this is uh, a later model, uh, T1100 plus. And I actually don't remember if this also, the T1000 comes with built-in MS-DOS in ROM, but I don't think this does. I got this computer several years ago, but I have never tried it and uh, powered it on. The plastic is starting to yellow. It's a bit brittle somewhere. Uh, you can see that this is... Um, yeah, it's been handled really well for the age, but you can hear some, some noises when you open the lid. Then like this. So there are some uh, issues uh, with this machine. Uh, this machine also had had some uh, corrosion. Uh, I will look uh, into this and check how uh, well it looks inside. It has a power switch and you can actually hear that is beeping so the battery is still inside. Uh, it has RGB, probably CGA or maybe Hercules output. Uh, it has serial and parallel and also composite uh, video, which really makes me think that this is G CGA uh, output. It is powered by a 9 volt DC power supply. And if you look, look on this from the back, you can see there are some curvature in this. And I don't know if there has been some heat that has this machine or it has been uh, dropped or if this has been an issue since it was manufactured. This machine is probably from 1987 or something around that time. Sorry for the flickering in, in the picture. There are some, I think, some uh, this is LED lights in my workshop, and I don't think they're flickering with either 50 or 60 hertz that the camera can compensate for. This rather sad looking computer, it's halfway dismounted, and it actually com came to me like this many, many years ago. And this was often the case when I had uh, my own shop and did repairs. We was for many years the, the only shop for miles around 
that did actually uh, electronics repair uh, on old computers. And uh, this machine, it's a, a, a Sonyo uh, Saison LT. This is this is actually the same model uh, as the first ever PC uh, I bought uh, myself. And this was back in 1980. Yeah, it was in 1988. But this machine is not actually the, the, the same computer. This is um, a computer that I got a uh, hold of, of later. And I do also have uh, the keyboard. But the hunting for the keyboard will be a story for another day. Because I know I have it in storage, but I was not able to find it. This machine, I actually have the, the service manual and, and everything stuck up for, for this. So it will be uh, possible to fix this if there is so, not some, some fault uh, in the chip sets uh, on the main board. This is uh, an extremely rare computer and I don't think I have ever seen uh, someone uh, presenting this computer before uh, on the internet. This is also an 8088 based uh, computer and was not a huge hit. It was a bit too late to the market to uh, be a really big success. And this actually had a, a rather small screen uh, for the time, but the, the resolution on this is uh, CGA. Uh, and it also has a dual uh, floppy design. Actually, there was this model of the same computer that only had one disk drive. This is uh, another one, quite rare uh, laptop. This is also from um, the late 8086 uh, area. It's uh, an, a machine from um, the Italian company Olivetti and this is an 8088 uh, machine with uh, CMOS technology uh, in the CPU so this is a battery powered uh, machine. This machine uh, does not have the, the battery uh, inside so uh, it's probably not corroded uh, as such. Uh, the machine, uh, as you can see, is uh, a Norwegian model uh, sold in, in Norway. This is uh, probably the original uh, dealer that sold the machine in, in, in Hamar uh, back in the day. Uh, the machine is, uh, uh, as I said, an 8088. It has uh, LCD display. It has uh, actually a dual uh, floppy configuration. Uh, I think this is uh, as a double density drive, uh, 720k. Uh, the machine uh, does not have a built-in in hard drive. Uh, and as you can see, it has a volume knob. Uh, it also can turn off the speakers completely. And it just has a contrast uh, knob uh, on the LCD. So this is not a backlight uh, LCD. Uh, it's uh, just a super twist uh, normal gray LCD. Uh, it also has the speaker here right in front. So they put some effort into the sound of this machine. Uh, the keyboard is actually uh, a design we have seen before. This is uh, a loose uh, keyboard, uh, good for ergonomics. Uh, the computer itself is in really good uh, condition as you can see. And this uh, Plastic is probably some discolored, but the Olivetti machines had this olive uh, color on them. So I'm not sure how much of the color is, but if you see inside the lid here, you will see that this, this is a bit more brownish. This is actually a color that's very similar to the Breadbox C64, 
uh, while in here it's it's more uh, grayish. Uh, and this machine has the normal expansion port, serial and parallel, and this is an expansion port uh, for an external uh, floppy drive. What's special with this machine is that it actually has dual uh, power uh, for charging and for the supply voltage to the machine. And that's uh, quite an unusual setup. I don't think I have seen it uh, on other other computer before. And this power supply that's matching also has this dual uh, setup. And these plugs should be configured so they're not interchangeable uh, with DC and charge. Uh, all metal uh, power supply. So it's, yeah, it's kind of unusual. Uh, back in the day also most of the power supplies were in, in plastics. This is the last computer I'm going to show you in this video. This is a later model uh, Sanyo. It's the 18 NB uh, personal computer from, uh, from Sanyo. And this is also a machine that not very much uh, talked about uh, on the internet. The design of the machine is, is rather conventional. It has contrast and brightness uh, for the LCD. It has floppy drive. It has the uh, VGA serial and parallel input uh, output in, in, in the back. And this here is uh, a modem that's extra, that's uh, built into the machine. You have the DC uh, connector for the really proprietary uh, power supply. And you have the on-off switch. The battery is almost dead. You can see it blinking and then it fades off. I actually don't have the charger for this uh, computer and I can't find uh, the pinout for this really special uh, plug uh, online. So I have to dismantle the computer to, to see what's uh, inside. But as this computer have VGA output, it is at least a 286. Uh, inside this I think and probably this is uh, the main battery it's possible for me to just charge the battery uh, and use that this is a NICAD battery so it's really working but it's only holding yeah maybe 10 seconds uh, of, of charge and this computer actually is from 1991 as you can see, this you probably don't see this, but this is a date stamp on, on uh, the battery. So this is also uh, a computer with some faults. The uh, lock on this side uh, is gone. The carrying handle is quite nice. It works. Uh, and of course the battery works uh, and is not corroded. And uh, all the other bits and pieces on these machines really look okay for for the age so this is a computer that's at least 28 years uh, old and it's yeah this is uh, i think it will be exciting to look more uh, into this uh, computer at a later time sorry for the rather long and uh, rambling uh, video uh, as I told you from the start, I'm not very experienced with, uh, with producing video and neither is uh, English my natural language as I'm a Norwegian. But hopefully uh, you enjoyed some of the, the contents and um, I see I have to make a follow-up on this video as I still have some more um, uh, old computers that deserve uh, their spot in, in the limelight. So, uh, thanks uh, for watching. Hopefully, hopefully anyone is watching. <laughs>
and um, maybe I see you again uh, in another video soon.